Welcome to the Crazy Wisdom Podcast. My guest here is David Boxenhorn. Uh, he wrote this really interesting blog post about uh, his two concepts of mundia and modia. Uh, it's an interesting framework that helped me understand a lot about what's going on in my own life and my history and thinking about the future. Uh, so I'm really excited to have you on. Um, I'd love to get more into what this framework talks about uh, and your thoughts about it. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so can you give people a brief introduction into your framework of Mundia and uh, Mundia and Modia, uh, mm -hmm. and a little bit more about how it came out? So I, I have this uh, theory about how person is my, my theory to explain interpersonal relationships between people in general and where the disconnect is. And it's um, in, I believe that people live in, in two different worlds. I call them mundia and modia. Mundia from, from I mean, the word mundus um, in Latin, it means the world. Mm. And we get the word, word mundane from, from mm. munda. Mm -hmm. and modia in, is from modus, which means the way, but like in, in, in French and other um, romance languages, um, the mode is, like, is the fashion. Mm. And uh, um, I use these. So Mundia, Mundia is the world, is the natural world, the world of gravity, of things that 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 don't have anything to do with people. And and Modia is the world of people, the world of social relationships. So everybody, everybody kind of knows that there's like people, people, and you know, thing people, people who are who are interested in, in things, and people who are interested in people. But the, the, the realization that I had that really explains everything to me is that pe people who are, who are focused on social relationships, who live in the world of Modia, apply the, the, the rules of Modia to everything. Mm. And same thing with Mundia. People who live in, in Mundia think that the rules of, of, the, of Mundia apply to everything. So, so, you know, if you're like, um, a, a Mundian, and say you're, you're a child, you're, um, you don't know much about the world, um, and you want to be more popular, you might think, oh, I have to be good at sports, or I have to be good at, I have to do all the, do things, Other things that like, like me. Yeah. Not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to work. <laughs> People, <laughs> I mean, you might, you might get some points for being good at sports, or being, you know, strong, or being something, you know, some, some of, some of these Mundian characteristics um, or being smart, but it won't get you that far. Mm. Now, Modian will understand this intuitively that, that it's just somehow this, this ability to manipulate social relationships to wear the right things, to believe in the right ideas, to like the right music. These are the kinds of things that will make you popular. But, they will, but those people will apply the, the, that framework to the world, to the world of Mundia, to and well, they will, um, if they if they have like two two competing competing theories about say um, uh, global warming, mm. they'll just be, they'll believe the people who are you know who everybody knows are the, are the right people, mm. like the actors and the and the movie stars and the you know mm. the people who are who are popular. Mm. And you give an interesting uh, nuance to this, which is essentially as you get older, people uh, go more from Modian, which is how social relationships and how that how those inform reality, to uh, Mundian, which is more looking at the natural laws of of, of natural principles of reality. Uh, which is interesting because I was just reading the book Behave by Robert Sapolsky and he goes into the interesting thing that as we are from the ages of like 13 to 19 in, when in high school, we're basically so um, obsessed with social relationships uh, and as our frontal cortex, our frontal cortex is actually really um, uniquely evolved in this social relationships you know as primates we were we were we were in our tribe and and thinking about hierarchy and all these different things and then as we get older maybe past the age of 30 it's kind of it seems like it's happening to me where i'm like not 
really as interested so much as as what is fashionable, what is but more what is what is true in a sort of uh, mm -hmm. eternal sense, um, which is really interesting. What do you think about that? Well, there are two things that characterize youth. Mm. First is that you're born not knowing anything. Mm. So like, how do we know what we know? Like, we, we test things a bit, you know, we learn some a new piece of information and say, oh, uh, that's not true, or, oh, yeah, that's true. It's, we think that because it, it how it fits into what we already know. Mm. But when you start when you're born, you know nothing at all. Mm. So it's just like, we're born and like, little children will just believe everything they're told. And especially what they'll believe anything their parents tell them or adults tell them. But actually, if you, have, if, you, if, you have, if you know little children, they'll believe anybody. They'll believe the other little kids. Yeah. You know, whatever they're told, they'll, they'll just believe it. Mm. So, so, those, so, so that's a, a, a Modian thing. They're not, they're not, just, they're, not um, uh, they're just believing what people tell them. And they're believing, and the people who they believe most are the people who would have the most authority, the most status in their world. Mm. The other thing that's true about, about childhood is that they're not actually in contact with, with the real world. You know, say when you get, get a little bit older, you're in high school, you know, you still, mm. you're pretty well developed, but you don't have to earn a living. You don't have to, you know, you don't, you're not faced with all these hard realities of, of Mundia. Mm. You know, the Mundia is completely unforgiving. Mm. If you don't, water your crops they won't grow mm -hmm. you know it mm -hmm. won't be it doesn't matter how, how what your neighbors think about about how you water your crops <laughs> what matters is how you water your crops yeah yeah so, so but when you're in high school there's nothing like there's, there's zero zero mundia mm -hmm. everything everything you do is how is how other people think of you or how your teachers think of you even even like even you know, things that are closest to Mundia, say math, your math class or something like that, even in math class, the, what your te the way your teacher, the te your teacher thinks of you mm. makes a big difference. Yep. You know, if, if, you, if, if um, and I've seen this, I've actually seen this, that, that, that a kid can be really talented in math, but say like not good at, 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 um, at uh, arithmetic. So yeah, so, and a, the teacher thinks that he's just, he's, he's not, he's, he's stupid, mm. even though he's good at math, because he just has this like one problem area that happens to actually um, mm. uh, destroy his, 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 everything he does. Mm -hmm. and, because, and because the teacher doesn't see it, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know. Doesn't pass through, he doesn't get to the next level or he doesn't get the, he doesn't get the help that he needs because, uh, because the teacher doesn't see Right, the, the value in him, basically. Yeah. But you take, but you take the same kid mm. who's good in Modia, and can explain himself, and mm. could, can, you know, can can demonstrate. He knows how to demonstrate his 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 talents, and that kid will do okay. Mm. So this could be good, interesting conversation about like an educational system. How does an educational system, and as the internet goes up, because what I've been finding about the internet, as long as you have a good framework to understand and to interact with the internet internet in a way that's beneficial uh, you can find whatever you want to learn about you can you can find the experts to learn whatever you want to do and mm -hmm. you can also uh, but the, I guess the internet there's a there's what is the, here's a good question so what is the internet in terms of your framework for Mundi and Modia because there are things about the internet that are um, the mode and the fashion and things like that. And then there mm -hmm. are things about the internet that are about natural laws and other things like that. What do you think about right. the internet in your framework? Well, and, you know, I think that, that, that what we call technology, mm. like Silicon Valley, that the world of technology has, be, has gone way over to Modia mm, in the last 20 years or so. Yeah. That, the difference, the reason why YouTube succeeded and not any of its com competitors yeah. was completely modian. It's like how the, the graphical user interface, like like how where the buttons were on the screen and and things like that. It wasn't it wasn't anything about the actual um, infrastructure that that YouTube developed. And same thing with Facebook. You know why why did Facebook succeed and not not other 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 competitors? 
because of the way the, the way the user interface was designed, the way they started in Harvard and, University. Yeah, and yeah. That, yeah. And well, and it's interesting because because venture capital itself, there's two components of there's two different ways you can go about venture capital. Uh, the, I mean, there's many, but but you can but two main ones, and it, you can either go on social proof. Uh, your ability to manipulate how other people see you, um, or you can go on building a technology that has a lot of users, which is kind of Mundi as well, because you already you're, because everything is based on users and how many users you have and how popular it is and growth right. and all these different things. Uh, but that social proof one can have absolutely nothing to do with the cold hard facts of what you're doing. It has more to do with how you uh, present yourself to people and whether they whether the investors know about the relationship that you have with other investors and all of these different things. So it's really interesting. Uh, but, right. but technology itself, I mean, you know, maybe 1960s and 1970s when it was less consumer facing, uh, mm -hmm. seemed like it, op it was manipulating the actual laws of the universe. We can keep on talking about this, but then there's an interesting conversation to be had about new kind of, advances in science and technology which talk about like quantum uh, physics which is you know that that the kind of subjective nature of 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 an atom and that in that that you know to and I'm you know I'm by no means an expert in this but there but th that I that an effect something I do here can have an effect very very far away mm -hmm. and that there's that it's not quite as clear as Newtonian physics that there are hard laws or that we can match these two kind of competing things. What do you think about that? Or we can keep on talking about that. I'm, I'm, um, I'm actually, I kind of lost you. What, what you're talking about, like, like Heisenberg uncertainty principle or something yeah. like that. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, to, to, totally mm -hmm. mundane, totally mm -hmm. mundane, even if it's not directly, you know, as obvious as Newtonian physics. Mm. I you know it's still it's still about manipulating the world. What people think about what you're doing has no has no impact on what you're actually doing. Mm. Your actual success. Mm. Interesting. Cool. So let's go back to technology and well, actually, let's talk about creativity and stress within this context of, of Mundia and, and Modia, you said that you had some interesting thoughts about, because I interview people about the relationship between creativity and stress. How does that fit into what you're talking about? Right. Well, well let's talk about so stress. Um, you know, there's Mundian stress and there's Modian stress. Mundian stress is the stress of, if you're building something, will the thing I'm building work? Mm. You know, will it break down? Will right. it come together? And, and Modian stress is like how people react to it if, it if it doesn't work or how can I convince people that it will work even they haven't seen it yet, even though I'm not finished, finished building it, how can I can make people um, believe that, I will, that, I, that it will work? Mm -hmm. Those kinds of things are um, Modian stresses. And it's very different, you know, with, you know, whether the technology works and whether it can sell are completely mm. two different questions. And they're both, you know, they're both important. Mm. Um, how important they are in a particular venture depends on the venture, it depends on the nature of the venture. Um, and it depends on the person doing the venture because somebody like Elon Musk can, has proved that he can turn technology into capital. Uh, and so he can rely on this kind of uh, Modian uh, understanding, but somebody who's just starting out needs to actually prove that, uh, prove that they can sell right. it as well. Well, I, I mean, I, I think somebody starting out can, has to prove both. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. But there you prove both, and you prove it in different ways. Um, and, you know, people would, well, you know, Modian proof, at least at the very beginning, you could, people get a, get a, a feeling for that. I don't know if it's a, true feeling, a correct feeling, mm. but you'll get a feeling from that just by talking to you. Oh, I'm ta you know, he, he makes me feel confident. I just think he can lead this venture. Mm. You know, oh, he doesn't feel, he feels, you know, he doesn't feel like a leader to me. As I don't think he can do it. Mm. Um, for, for the Mundian part, they'll actually want to see the product or they want to, you know, 
they'll, you know, they'll hire a techn technical person to, to look into it who, who, who might be from a completely different field and does no understanding of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, Interesting. Uh, and so how did you come about with this framework? How did you, how do you, where did it come from? We didn't start, we didn't talk about creativity yet. Oh, okay, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> so creativity is also Mundian and Modian. Like, oh. I'm, I mean, I don't know how you define creativity. I'll define it as um, coming up with an idea that works that nobody has thought of. Mm. Okay. So um, a, you know, Modian, Modian creativity would be like fine arts is Modian creativity or coming up with a new way to sell something would be Modian. Mm -hmm. But there's also Mundian creativity, which, which people don't, people who are not engineers or scientists don't understand that there's a, that Mundia has its own creativity. You know, Einstein was a Mundian, you know, mm -hmm. creative. Mm -hmm. People come up with, with, with ways of solving problems that, that nobody has come up with before. That's a creative process. And it's a very, important creative process mm. um it's kind of a mysterious to me it's kind of mysterious i don't know where these things you know we're creative as someone who has has you know solved things myself i don't really know where the ideas come from nobody nobody does nobody and you know you ask einstein the same thing he, he said it would come from his imagination but where did the imagination come from you know it's this like this is what i this is this is what I know. I know that if I'm, I've been working hard on a problem all day and then I get tired and I drive home, mm -hmm. that while I'm driving home that's when and I'm... not working on the problem, that's when I could think of the, I could think of the solution. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm sure that, or it has something to do with like, not, like disengaging, like, you know, there's a kind of problem solving that, that, that you get from engaging with the problem um that's not so creative it's a matter of like looking around or something like that or applying theory you know applying your rational regional you know, logic ability or reasoning ability and there's a kind of problem solving that's not engaging mm -hmm. it's like pulling back and like letting something happen that i don't know what that thing is <laughs> well, <laughs> but yeah. that's where the that's where the the creativity comes from well that's a really interesting point because it kind of gets into techniques for focus and awareness where uh, for example, where you pay attention to the breath and you're totally focused on the breath over and over and over again, you focus your mind on the breath. Uh, and then, but that, that state then leads to another technique where you can then look at what is focusing on the breath, uh, and step back from the focus itself, the process of focus, focus itself and step back and look at, look at what it's, what is actually looking at the, fo uh, the focus on the breath. Uh, and it's a way of disengaging Im from immediate sensation and, and identifying with that sensation of focusing on the breath, which is, uh, which is interesting. And that's called objective awareness or objective uh, consciousness. And, and um, that can be super helpful. And that's, you know, and that's kind of like when we dream, when we, when we go and drive or anything like that, it takes us out of that immediate identification with the problem. But we've done that kind of work up front of, of identifying with the problem, working through it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, well, I find that, that, that the best thing to do, like the best way to be creative is like, first have an intense period of, of engagement with the problem, mm -hmm. and then do something that's kind of meditative, like that, that involves your brain, but not too much. And things are, are like driving is one of those things, taking a shower, and people, a lot of people have ideas in the shower, mm. washing dishes. You know, these are all things that, that you know, they, they involve some kind of thought, but not like deep thought. So while you're doing these things, your brain could be somewhere else. Like, I don't know. I don't know where that is, but that's, you mm. know, that's when the great ideas come to you. Mm. You know, people take a walk in the, you know, people take a walk in the woods or a walk around the corner. You know, Hmm. Interesting. So I've Moody, gotten, go for it. <laughs> what did you say? I've gotten a little off topic. <laughs> well, that's fine. Yeah, that's a... You asked, you asked about my definition of creativity and that's a fun thing. I don't really have one. Uh, so, you know, uh, one definition 
could be like you said, creating something that nobody's ever created before, like birthing a new child that's never existed mm -hmm. or or it could be cr taking two different ideas that other people didn't see the connection between and then connecting it and then making value or it could be like you said the uh, let's let's talk about the the mundian versus uh, modian uh, creativity because i read this great book called loon shots uh by uh safi bakal and i ended up interviewing him and he talks about two different types of loon shots and a loon shot is an idea that's kind of crazy that an organization oftentimes will reject uh, because it is a little bit crazy. Uh, but then, if you if somebody if uh, somebody persists with that idea, they can they can turn it into a business and create a lot of value. And so mm -hmm. he talks about two different types of loon shots. One is a product loon shot, and one is a strategy loon shot. Uh, that product loon shot sounds very similar to what you're talking about in the um, Modian. No, I'm sorry, the Mundian uh, sense of creating a new thing that nobody's ever created before that changes. Uh, how people behave and then there's the strategy loon shot which is uh, s like what Walmart did Walmart set up big stores in rural areas that had never had grocery stores before uh, and that was a strategy that was a new way of, of um, manipulating human behavior as opposed to manipulating technology um, what do you think about that do you think that fits with your understanding um I don't know. I think that either one of them could be Modian or Mundian, depending on whether they involve something new with pe involving how people how how people engage with things, or in, or whether it's something that just involves the natural world. Mm. I mean, if it's like genetics or something, you know, then it's Mundian. It's totally Mundian. It's not how people think about it will not change whether it works or not. Mm. Interesting. So. Let's let's talk about culture in terms of the framework because it does seem that we're kind of this postmodernist understanding of of truth and that there is no truth separate from what people uh, believe about truth uh, or what what different cultures and stuff like that. What do you think about that? How does that fit? How does our recent cultural um, kind of because <clears throat> that's you know culture is all mm -hmm. uh, all Modian. It's all it's all what right. what is what is in vogue and what is the point of culture and like because culture itself seems like an evolutionary advantage that can be described in this modian sense as well right right so mundi and modia they, they interact with each other you know when we're not you know if you talk to somebody about say global warming even if they're even if they're Mon modian they'll still in, in, invoke mundia authority yeah you know, mm -hmm. they'll still say say oh oh you know they, they won't they won't explicitly say say oh i just think that it's true because because everybody else thinks it's true mm. they'll so they'll, they'll say oh it's um all the experts think it's true and the experts supposedly like know about mm. about the real world mm -hmm. there are other, there's some there are some experts who suppose who, who 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 say who you know who say the opposite and but they might not. be the minority but yeah. how can you say that they're not that you know, do you have any way of judging that they know they know less about the real world than than? Mm. You know? <laughs> um, Which is it's an interesting thing because we are now going towards a stage where it is dangerous to be skeptical, and that doesn't right. mean dangerous to be to be to say that global warming is not happening and to totally deny it, but it but it is not is you 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 can't even question it which is the right, fundamental right. thing about science which is important to question everything right um, right you can't even, you can't even say that you're undecided i yeah. mean like i say i'm yeah. undecided mm. i'm undecided and people say oh you're a denier yeah. no i'm not a denier i'm i just haven't decided yet mm -hmm. <laughs> because, mm. because you know i haven't i haven't seen enough evidence for enough time and and also the the nature of knowledge human knowledge because we can model everything that we want but there is no modeling reality reality will play out in the way that it plays out and our models about reality you know ask anybody ask ask anybody in finance if they can predict right. the future right. if, exactly you know, exactly yeah, yeah. nobody can do I mean, it nobody the models that we the models that we actually test the models of the stock market the models of the economy, the models of, you know, 
they all fail. So why should I think that the global warming model will, you know, is the one that could succeed mm. when there's no other way for me to test the, test it? Mm. That's that's you know. <laughs> so this is this is you know this is uh, going off. This is, I think related to the topic, but but it's going off uh, something in my own life. I realized that you we can't take. Uh, single weather events and say that that is related to a global change because weather is yeah. chaotic and, and uh, but every summer for the last 10 years it's been really hot do you get worried about it <laughs> do, like do you get worried about about that there you know that there is ice there is ice um, melting at uh, higher rates what do you think about that yeah uh, don't ask <laughs> ask me about global warming. I'm not an expert in global warming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just know that these are very long-term trends. I mean, we yeah. had a little ice age in the what, 1600s or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. And it lasted, what, 200 years or something? Mm -hmm. No, I, we don't have the, the, if you say that, that there's just been tr the trend going on for the last 20 years, I mean, we know that trends don't go, go mm -hmm. on for hundreds of years. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so so interesting that we. So, how the, what is the stress of somebody who is living in a Mundian universe, primarily Mundian universe, who goes into a uh, Modian universe? Uh, for example, maybe a scientist who 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 spends all of his life trying to all of his or her life trying to figure out the laws of the universe and then mm -hmm. goes and tries to win the Nobel Prize or something like that. Right. So this is this is this is actually something that a lot of people don't understand that if you're a scientist, you're in the world of Modia, not I mean, even if you're your 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 science is Mundia, you still have to deal with getting getting grants and getting acknowledgement from your peers. And getting and, and advancing in the in the framework of academia, and and if you take a wrong step, if you take a wrong step in in Moodya, mm -hmm. you can you can be done with. I mean, you know, um, who was it? The the, the geneticist, the famous um, um, Crick. Crick. Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he said Francois. something about. Uh -huh. that. Uh, well, no, uh, here's yeah, another, uh, another good example is Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer, mm -hmm. who, Oppenheimer, who created the Manhattan Project and then ended up mm -hmm. getting, uh, uh, getting, um, going and having to go in front of Congress because people suspected that he was a communist. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, similar thing. Mm -hmm. So, well, I mean, at least he was in, in defense. So, like, if you were a communist, it would be really important. Mm. But that guy, the guy who who said who made some comment about about he thought that Africa would never succeed because mm. whatever like, it had nothing to do with his his actual science. Mm. You know, but he, he was he was like his career was finished. You know, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, you know, and 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 that's somebody who's who's completely you know already a proven scientist who has a you know had a had a you know famous career if you're just coming up if you're in your your 20s and you're working your way up and you make a you know a wrong step of that nature you're you're finished Interesting. No, matter how good, no matter how good you are in mundia in the mundian science that you're actually working on mm -hmm. which is really and everybody in academia knows this mm -hmm. people are really i mean it's pretty scary and which is which is interesting because so and then there's there's another option that 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 is very rare that people can take and I'm not sure how one can actually um, find this. It seems to be something that maybe might be inborn, uh, but there's another concept that is relevant here called anti fragility uh, because mm -hmm. you have uh, fr fr fragility and then you have resilience and then you have anti fragility. Fragility would be being totally blown over by stress, can't handle it, can't integrate it. A resilience would be okay. I can handle a lot of stress and still manage to survive. And then there's anti fragility, where if you attack it, it will actually grow stronger and stronger mm -hmm. and stronger. And some yeah. people are anti fragile to um, to Modian uh, things. Uh, uh, Nicholas Nassim Taleb himself would be somebody who's who. It doesn't really matter what people say about him. He can just mm -hmm. he like he can brush it off. 
I, it'd be interesting to, to understand it. Another person example would be Donald Trump, who mm-hmm. doesn't have these, these laws just don't apply to him, no matter what people say about him. They're, they, Trump, is a, Trump is a total modium. Uh, right now, the yeah. reason why, mm-hmm. the reason why he, he provokes the reaction that he provokes is that he's 100% modium. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he's, I'm not saying that he's not capable in Mundia, he's not good at his job, or he's not, you know, he actually built buildings that didn't fall down. Mm-hmm. But his political style is 100% modium, and that's very upsetting to both sides. It's upsetting to the Democrats because he's playing their game. Mm-hmm. He's playing their game. Interesting, yeah. Mm-hmm. Again, you know, the Democrats, you know, their game is they call you a racist or, or a bigot or, you know, have all these, na- these names for you. And he's just like, he just does the same thing. Uh-huh. He just calls, calls the Democrats, you know, his opponent's names, you know, yeah. and makes that work for him. And the Republicans are upset about that because Republicans are mostly Mundians. Mm-hmm. And they're like saying like, like, I don't want to play this game. I don't want to be in this game of, of, uh, you know, it is, it's beneath me to sit, to play this, 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 this Modian game where I say things that are not really true because like it, it gets me, it makes people think what, you know, think that I'm better or I'm worse or, you know, this, this, I just want to tell the truth, tell my ideas and people will believe me because, because they're good ideas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and so, so Trump is like, he, he, he breaks the rules for both sides. Mm. And that's why everybody, that's why, you know, you, you have these anti-Trumpers on the right. And, and of course you have anti-Trumpers on the left too. And why do you think this is, why do you think that somebody like him can, can, is, it seems related to the internet. It seems related to the original question that we were talking about, which is the, the, the technology itself is moving more towards the, um, the Modian connecting subjective consciousness together in a network of, 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 of kind of like Modian things. So it's, but then it's also giving us access to more people who are thinking in this Mundian way as well. What, what do you think? I don't really have a point here, but. I, I, didn't, I, I guess I didn't understand the question. What, what... So, so we've got, so, the conditions that allow for somebody like Trump to, to, uh, to rise in power probably wouldn't have happened like 20 or 30 years ago because, you know, you have the t- TV was, was controlled by a, a small group of people who were able to get their message out uh, to mm-hmm. many people. And now you have this technology that allows for m- many individuals to create their message. And it doesn't mean that their messages will automatically rise but it does mean for some small percentage of that population, they are going to have their message be out there more. So it seems like the internet is kind of playing with the, what we thought were principles of reality, but we're actually just principles of, 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 of Moonia, right. of, of, of Modia. Um, so what do you think about that? Right. Right. So, so the internet has made, has made, um, um, Modia much more dynamic. Mm. It, because it, it used to be that, you know, when there's only three TV stations, that if you capture the high ground, if, then you have a tremendous advantage mm. um, over everybody else, which, I mean, it's still, you still have that advantage, but it's not quite as much, as much an, a, 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 as an, of an advantage. Um, on the other hand, on the other hand, what we've also seen is that, that Modia has captured a lot more institutions. I mean, it's completely dominated academia, mm. um, dominated all kinds of, uh, you know, government has become much more involved. There are a lot of trends that, 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 um, that, that increase the power of, mm. of um, uh, in, that, 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 that entrench the Modia more. And that the reason for that is that as technology develops, as we become more prosperous, we become less less connected to Mundia. I mean, when ninety percent of the population were farmers, uh, yeah, you everybody knew that if you didn't plant your crops, you know, if you didn't make hay when the sun shines, yeah, 
you aren't going to have hay. Yeah. It didn't and, matter what your neighbors thought about that. You know, you had to do it. You had to, you had to, to conform to, to the laws of nature. And now, you know, the trend over time has been, been more and more of our economy has been in Modia. Mm. And as government gets bigger, go government is completely Modian, Modian institution because, because everything depends on, who, on what your boss thinks of you. Mm. And nothing very, and, and, and um, the reality of whether you, what you're doing is working or not is more and more distant. Mm. From your, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of trends that, that are increasing the, the power of Modia over Mandia. So there's a lot of thoughts that I just had. Uh, one of the most on the top of my head is that it's uh, cryptocurrency and Bitcoin uh, are taking f money, which has been separated from things like gold, taken off the gold standard and taken off of kind of like uh, a connection to real to to uh, Mundia. And then now is being put back into math, basically, and cryptographic um, uh, protection. Yeah, but that's not important. Uh huh. I mean, Why not? I mean, there is a, there is of course a Monday inside of it that whether the technology works. Mm. But what you're talking not, about yeah. is Monday. Yeah. Mm. yeah, because people believe in it. Uh, because people b believe in Bitcoin, that's the reason why Bitcoin is now becoming popular. Is because people believe right. in. Um, yeah, and then there is another interesting. You're talking about institutions, organizations, large organizations are uh, Modian. Uh, based on the mode of the fashion, because your your the processes like your the organization is is is. I, I lost you. Can you hear me now? I lost you. I lost you. Can you hear me now? Um, there seems to be a delay or something. My yeah. My internet connection is unstable. Uh, I can hear you fine. Yeah, I can hear you. Too. I can hear you now. Too. Okay. okay, so it's back. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, splice it together. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I'll just I'll just take it out. I'll just or we could keep it in. Uh, uh, so you were talking about organizations and how organizations um, basically, you know, you 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 become removed from your output. So you put an input and then you you get removed from your output. That seems like an organization of bureaucracy kind of. That's what it does. Uh, and in some ways, some organizations can make that really valuable, but a lot of organizations make it not that valuable. Uh, which is right, my, 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 go for it. Well, my my observation is that all human institutions become more Modian over time, mm. and the reason for that is because the institutions are made up of human institutions are made up of people, and so the internal workings of the organization will become more and more important over time. Now, the counterbalance to that is that these institutions, if they're doing something in the real world, you know, if they're selling sandwiches, they still have to sell sandwiches. And if they can't, they're not successful at selling sandwiches, they'll fail. Mm -hmm. So Mundia is like, is, is exerting a um, evolutionary pressure against them. And if they don't adapt, they'll be wiped out. They'll be filth, you know, as Nassim would say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They filtered. They would, be, they would be ruined unless the, unless they're part of a government, which then uh, doesn't d doesn't uh, as part of a government or as part of a nonprofit, which don't have profit as a as a um, as a mediating circumstance for whether they survive or not. Um, right. If they if they don't if they don't actually have a Mundian hmm. a mon, a, you know a Mundian input. Mundian inputs. Yep. Mm. <laughs> they don't have they don't they don't have to deal with Mundi at all. Which is the case for government and for nonprofits, mm -hmm. then they can, they're completely free and they will become completely Modian and they'll be taken over by whatever fashion, you know, whether, whatever the latest fashion is, if it's, you know, um, anti, mm -hmm. anti sexism or if it's Nazism or if it's, you know, whatever it is, they can go there because nothing will stop them. Nothing, there's no, there are no constraints. Interesting. And so, this the, okay. Have you heard of the simulation theory? the The no. idea that that the idea that 
if human beings can create games with ever com more complexity and ever more kind of reality, that if we can make games that approach the, the, the level of reality, uh, then doesn't it make sense that we are also part of a simulation in another beings, uh, basically like a game, basically. Maybe, uh, maybe. <laughs> so it's, uh, it, but you know, this, this, there's, a, there's an asymmetry between Mandia and Modia, which is that, which is that Mandia includes Modia. Like, mm. you know, our, the yeah. so, 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 yeah. our um, social relationships are part, of, are part of the natural world, but Mandia doesn't, you know, but Modia doesn't include Mandia. Social relationships don't include the world. Yeah. So there's that asymmetry. The reason why these two, Mandia and Modia, are, have, equal status um, as to us as human beings is, is our cognitive, you know, cognitively they, they have equal, they're equal status. Mm. Interesting. You know, mm. Interesting. So it's an illusion basically. It's, it's human beings have an illusion that this Modian has more, more weight than the Mundian basically. Well, it depends. If you're a Mundian, you're, you're, you, you you're think right. that. But if you're a Mundian, yeah. uh, yeah. you're, naturally, you're naturally biased towards, towards you know, mm -hmm. the social the world. Was, yeah. mm -hmm. Interesting. So but the, the reason why I was talking about the simulation theory is because it's related to the technology conversation, which we've now created social networks that are underlaid by technology, by uh, natural laws, but then humans are putting their, basically like their, their, you know, I spend a large amount of my time on this screen in this network. Uh, and then Facebook has captured this social network and made uh, a value out of that. Uh, and then um, it's just a, interesting because more and more people are spending more and more time on, on engaged with this thing that, that is like taking this Modian and, and creating like a, a universe in it. And then what happens when our ability to store data gets so great that we can then get more and more? What, what, you know, what is the end process of this, basically? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe, you know, we'll all create our own world someday and we'll be, you know, gods in our own worlds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, you yeah. Know, I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, but if that's, that's the tr you know, the trend is, to, is ever increasing modia like Mundia is becoming less and less significant in our lives and you know even for even if for a mundian even if you're 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 cognitively biased towards mundia towards thinking about mundia modia is pr still probably more important to you than mundia in mm -hmm. your life mm -hmm. you probably still care more about being popular or at least you know having you know your 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 human relationships than you care about their your natural relationships because it goes because it's so deep to our evolution as, as human beings in social organizations and this is the the book behave gets into the actual neurobiology behind this which it it's just endlessly fascinating that that no matter how much you think you care about the natural world uh the immediate way you get your food or the way that we got our food in the past was navigating these hierarchies, these domination hierarchies, basically, and, and trying to figure out the relationships between all these people. That's the way you ate. That's the way you, that you, you survived. Was, was well, that, that's the way we eat now. Yeah. That's what we eat now. If you're mm. in a hunter-gatherer society, you go out and you, get your, you shoot your own, you know, your own food. Well, but then, but then the splitting up of the food is also, is also, is also key, dependent on, on, on hierarchies and, and, and then, and then, and, and then also, uh, t tension, uh, uh, interest, the, one of the most interesting things I learned in this book was that when the hierarchies are stable, when you know, who's above you and you know, who's below you, then mm -hmm. less stress, there's less stress for all the people, except for the guy at the top, because the guy at the top is always worried about, about people trying, trying to get, get, get them, uh, out the, the, when stress appears, when those, when it's unclear who's above and who's below, that's when the most stress mm -hmm. is basically, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Right, but, but if, you're, if you, I mean, clearly our cognitive um, makeup uh, evolved in this, in this like hunter-gatherer societies. And mm -hmm. so obviously, since we have a, a high social awareness, 
social awareness must must have been important back then. But still, I think that that you know, if you're a hunter gatherer society, if you're like really good at shooting down, mm. you know, prey, you're going to have a high status in that society. Mm. Mm. Even if you're even if you're not so good at like like knowing who like the relationships between people. Now, mm-hmm. you know, in our society, I think that's much less true. Mm-hmm. Because uh, you can go on Instagram and create an image of yourself uh, that gets that really hooks into other people's idealized image, uh, and then get a whole bunch of followers, and then start getting getting money based on on this image that you created of this of this Modian thing. Well, that would be yeah, that would be totally Modian. But but I, you know, there are Modian. I mean, people, you know, there are. Um, there is a need for, for, for Mundians and Mundian success. Things have to work. The bridges have to not fall down and the, the technology has to work. But those people, those people who are behind the technology, like they're never going to have high status. Mm. At least they're never, you know, you, you could be like, you know, the richest person in the world and you won't have, your status won't be as high as, as, as an actor yep. who like can project, you know, who can manipulate people. Mm-hmm. You know, who's going to get the, most, the biggest fan club? You know, is it the, yeah. <laughs> it's the actor? The actor will always have the bigger fan club because that's that's his business. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Which that's and that's uh, that's I find really interesting that people look towards actors to uh, download the right ideas as to what mm-hmm. should be done. Uh, what is what is what is right? What is good? And all these different things. Uh, mm-hmm. Really interesting. And they're not, yeah, they're not looking to the scientists unless they, unless they believe in scientism and kind of like uh, have this idea that, that, that science is a religion. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, if you're, if you're a Monday and you know, like, oh, the actor, you know, this actor is stupid and, and I, and, and that, what they say has nothing to, you know, it's not going to influence me that much. Mm. If you're a Modian, you know, you don't think about those things. Mm-hmm. You just think, think. Oh, you know, this is this is what everybody believes, and therefore I believe it too. Or this is what the, the cool people. This is, this is how the, the high status people believe. You know, I mean, you can see it most most clearly in fashions because everybody knows that fashions go in and out of style, and that there's no there's no um, there's no uh, objective reason why why today's fashions. Are better than yesterday's fashions and people mm. still think that yesterday's fashion looks stupid and today's fashions look fashions look cool and they think about you know every you know Cyclical. every time the fashions change they think the same thing the old fashions look stupid and the new fashions look fashions look cool and you know mm. and it's uh, cyclical too and and this also happens with 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 thought and philosophy it, it, the, i remember reading somewhere that it happens every 20 years where uh, between romanticism and realism, uh, or or Apollyon and Dionysian, where it's like goes to rational and then it goes to emotional, or and then it goes to romantic and then it goes to realistic, and uh, mm-hmm. it's just this kind of like whatever you know. That's why I like figuring out both because, and that's why I don't like just kind of like believing or holding on to a belief and understanding that that's reality because it's important to always question it because it's like because of what you're talking about because of this this we're we as human beings are very aware of what other people are thinking um and so it's very difficult not to yeah i don't know it's it's mm-hmm. difficult not to get swept up in it right i mean see i mean that's what i'm saying that, that the, we we th- we think these things about fashions even though we we know and even the most modian person will know that really doesn't matter mm-hmm. it only matters in terms of so- socially it doesn't matter in terms of anything objective and they'll still believe it people will still say oh you know you're a yep. so old fashioned and the, as an insult yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. so this is really interesting we got a couple minutes left uh and i'm i'm interested in in kind of what, what the question i had before where did this come from where did you uh when did you first come up with this Mundian Modian thing and, and how is your scientific life kind of um, your, because you said you also solve these 
problems in, in science and stuff like that. What, 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 what are those? Well, you know, I'm, I'm a Mundian mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, since I was a child, I was trying to figure out like there's this other thing going on that I didn't really understand. Like I remember as a, as a young child, like the first time, like something went out, like something went out of fashion when the fashions changed and I thought, and here I thought like, Oh, this way of dressing is the right way of dressing. And this is the way I'm not dressed to be cool, yeah. to have high status. And I suddenly it changed. Like, what's going on there? Like, mm. how can that? How can that be? Mm. It was like, um, it's completely foreign to my nature. And 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 I, you know, I knew that there's other things going on. And I, and I also know, like, and as I, was, I got older, I realized like. There are some very, very smart people out there that thought really stupid things. I mean, mm -hmm. things that I thought were stupid. Yeah. Like, how could they think that? How could they not be convinced, you know, that, I don't know, <laughs> mm. that you need to, you, you can't, um, the governments can't pay for everything. They also, have, because they have to balance their budget. How could they, like, people, like, just not care about that? Mm. Or, <laughs> you know, I, you know, and I was, you know, I realized that people were, th were thinking in a, in a way that was very different than the way that I was thinking. And I also realized that they weren't stupid people. They were smart people. Mm. These were the people, who, you know, we got, got A's in school and got, you know, and I knew them personally. So I knew that they were smart people and they were not disingenuous because I, they weren't people who, they weren't bad people. Mm -hmm. so they weren't stupid and they weren't bad. Mm. They were something else. And what was that thing? Mm. So now I know the answer that they're Modians. Mm, interesting. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Is there one book that has matched what you're talking about or kind of influenced what you're talking about that you've read? You know, I, I'm sure there, I, I've been influenced by many things. Things I, I, I don't know of any particular thing that is like a proto mm. um, version of this idea. I mean, you know, everybody. A lot of people know that that I didn't invent the the idea that there are are um, people, people, and thing people. Are you a thing person or are you a people person? Mm -hmm. You know that that's you know very old. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I knew that for many years without actually understanding how it how that um, how that had this had this completely um, affected everything in life, <laughs> you know, mm. I, I didn't, I didn't like, I didn't take, take that notion to its logical, to its conclusion mm. about how, you know, how the world is the way it is because there are all these people who are people, people, and all these other people who are thing people. Mm. And, and, um, and, how they, they the, the fact that they, they see the world in these two different ways, how that, that affects society, like how it permeates society. Mm. And I, I, so I, I, I think I, I do know some, they don't use the same language as you do, but, but there, I, I would say that Taoism is pro probably the closest thing to, to what you're talking about in terms of, uh, in terms of people who uh, have tried to study the natural laws. And this is before we had the scientific method and before we had kind of, mm -hmm. Uh, an understanding of what 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 is the natural laws, regardless of what society and what what uh, I think I think Taoism and another interview I've done recently with Charlie Pinto. I think that probably comes the closest. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, okay. well, yeah. <laughs> but thank you so okay. much for coming on the show. And how um, how can people find out more about this blog post that you wrote, or that what's the how can people find that particular article that uh, de defines? Well, if, if you Google Mandia and Modia, you'll find it. Or if you Google my name, you'll probably find it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Can you put the link in in, in the show in notes? Yeah. Yep. Uh, it's a very it's a very short blog post. You know, it's like two hundred words or something like that. Mm. And basically, it says everything that I want to say is is in there. Mm. Um, uh, in kind of you know very short form cool <laughs> well thank you so much for coming on the show and be great to have you again in, on a couple in a couple more months but 
Mm -hmm. Okay, you're we very welcome. It was a great pleasure yeah. to, uh, to meet you and to be on your show. Cool.